Welcome back. You're going to want to buckle up for this video. Today we're going to cover the craziest moments in F1 history. From drivers flying through the air at speeds of over 150 miles per hour to someone invading the track, stay tuned in. You don't want to miss these clips. First, we got the moment when someone invaded the track mid-race. Just like Hockenheim a couple of years ago, we've got a lunatic on the track down the hangar straight. This priest went insane. I couldn't imagine what he was thinking running out onto the track. They later found out that he was a Irish Roman Catholic priest that just wanted to spread the good word and held a sign that said, read the Bible, the Bible is always right. The Bible may be right, but I'm not sure if his decision to run on the track was right. Moving on to the next event, an even crazier moment was when a Red Bull car went flying up in the air at the 2010 Chinese Grand Prix. Toro Rosso, driver Sebastian Bumi, got in a terrifying crash when he's heading down the back street at 180 miles per hour. Luckily, Yuemi escaped the crash and nothing major happened. But we can't say the same for the crash in Monza because both the F1 car and the driver were thrown in the air and took some hard hits. Australian driver Alex Peroni collided with a curb at 150 miles per hour. And to Alex Peroni, oh my goodness me. That is a horrific sight. This terrifying collision sent him flying through the air, flipping several meters before crashing into a safety fence. Peroni surprisingly escaped the scene without any obvious injury, but his racing team later revealed that he did break a vertebrae. Later on, the doctors reported that he was lucky to get out with just breaking his vertebrae and not losing his life. Moving on, let's take a look at something to lighten up the mood. The moment when Kimi Raikkonen got an award from the season opener, leading the championship with five wins. He put up a great fight in the closing round. Kimi was absolutely gone during the awards ceremony when he received the awards. Hysterical. Coming up next is Mark Webber's accident because what happened to him was simply unforgettable. At the 2010 European Grand Prix, Mark was already having a bad race to begin with since he had dropped from P2 to P18. But what he didn't know is that when his race was about to go from bad to worse, on lap 10, when Mark attempted an overtake on the fastest part of the circuit, Weber's front right tire caught the rear of Lotus's driver, Heke Kovalainen's car. This impact sent his car flying in the air, landing on its nose at 190 miles per hour before bouncing and crashing into the tire barrier. Luckily, Weber wasn't hurt, but the car did become a total disaster. Man, that's brutal. But you know what else is brutal? How about the one time when the driver took out seven cars out of the race in one instance? Or the time when one driver almost retired from the race but instead ended up winning it? We'll get to all of that in this video, but first, let's talk about the time when Michael Schumacher got involved in a situation which has only happened once in F1 history. With Schumacher leading by just one point and Villeneuve trailing behind, the stakes were as high as they could be at the European Grand Prix. So both drivers were trying to set their best times in qualifying. However, what actually happened was something no one saw coming. They both set the same exact time, exactly the same, down to milliseconds. And to make matters even more complicated, Villeneuve's teammate Frentzen also set the same time in qualifying. 0.02, Jacques Villeneuve has the pole. Seven, Michael Schumacher. Oh, he just failed. It's exactly the same. Harold Frentzen, no. Oh, my. Oh, my. This was something for the books. But not as crazy as the moment in the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix because what happened there was nothing less than a miracle. On the rain-soaked track, Jensen Button started P7, and at lap 7, the race got a safety car when Jensen collided with teammate Lewis Hamilton, which forced Hamilton to retire. But when the race resumed again on lap 13, Button also got a drive through penalty for speeding behind the safety car, which left him back in 15th place. Now, seems like things couldn't get any worse for Jensen, right? Wrong. Because fast forward to lap 37, he was involved in another collision with Alonso, which forced the Spaniard to retire. The collision, however, punctured Jensen's car too, which ended him in the last place and over 1 minute 40 seconds behind race leader Vettel. 
but Button still didn't give up. He quickly made up positions and was 14th by lap 44. And by lap 46, he had caught Modano and El Garasari and passed others too for 10th place. And this, with his tires changed to slicks due to the drawing line, Button made his way to the front, getting past Michael Schumacher and Mark Webber before setting his eyes on Sebastian Vettel. With only five laps remaining in the final lap, Vettel had 0.9 second lead and it seemed like he was about to win when suddenly Vettel made a costly mistake at turn six. He ran wide, causing his RB7 to spin under pressure just halfway through the final lap, which allowed Button to overtake and win the race from last position to first. To the pit straight, he wins a brilliant race. It's a sensational drive for Button. What a victory. Now that's some comeback story. I think it just shows that you should never give up in this sport. Everything went wrong up until when I won the race. Clearly it was one of the best rain races ever. But while rain helped Jensen's race, we can't say the same for Lewis Hamilton because what rain did to him and others in the European GP was simply ridiculous. After the start of the race, Nurburgen was suddenly hit by a huge rainstorm and soon it became so unfortunate that drivers couldn't even control their cars anymore. Jensen Button was the first to spin off the track. Then there goes Lewis Hamilton. Then Adrian Sudel. Then Nico Rosberg. Scott Speed and Vintanio Tony Luizzi all crashed all the same corner within seconds. I mean, the whole circuit turned into a river. Now you don't see that every day. But still not as rare as what Sebastian Vettel did in Monza because that was just unbelievable. Before the 2008 Italian Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel had only taken 19 points in his F1 career while lining up for the Scuderia Toro Rosso racing team. But what he did in Monza changed everything. 21-year-old Vettel stunned the world by claiming the pole position for the Toro Rosso STR3 team. But that wasn't the most spectacular thing to happen at the race weekend because the German driver also won the race, finishing a resounding 12 seconds ahead of Hiki Kovalainen's McLaren. It was true underdog story because not only was it Vettel's first win, but also the small racing team's first ever win in Formula One. Even Toro Rosso's team principal couldn't believe it. It's just unbelievable. Sebastian wrote something into Formula One history that day. We also dream of a podium and the first podium is P1 in Monza, the most amazing racetrack in the world to him. But you know what's really unbelievable? The horrific crash that shocked the world. It was 1993 and legendary driver Damon Hill took the checkered flag at the Belgian GP. But that wasn't the highlight of the race. As other drivers were pushing towards 200 miles per hour to make it to the finish line, Minardi's teammates Christian Fittipaldi and Puligari Montini were running close to each other. Soon, Fittipaldi, with his M193, got a little too close when he tried to overtake Martini. But then disaster happened. Instead of having a simple touch between both drivers, Fittipaldi's car flew into the air, did a 360 degree backflip before landing and still managed to get across the line. Yeah. That actually happened. Luckily, this dangerous moment left no one hurt and both finished the race without losing any position. But this incident did leave Fittipaldi enraged with his teammate. I was so glad to be alive. I won't waste time in my life arguing with a fool like him. For me, he was dirty and imbecile. From that day, I never talked to him again. I have nothing against him, but for me, he and a trash can on the street are the same thing. You know, I don't think we're going to see a moment that crazy again. And we're probably never going to see anything like this next moment again either, which surprisingly happened not that long ago. A lot of people already know that Esteban Ocon won his first F1 race in the 2021 Hungarian GP. Now, even though this was huge, it still wasn't the biggest thing that happened in the race. Because in the first lap, and literally at the first corner, former Mercedes driver Valtteri Bodas braked too late and ran into the back of Lando Norris. This caused Red Bull drivers Verstappen and Perez to also get caught up in the collision. So four cars collided in one instance. But that wasn't all because Aston driver Lance Stroll also made a mistake by colliding with Leclerc, who then smashed into Ricardo's McLaren. All of this happened in the same corner at the same time. Because of this, the race was obviously red flagged. But what's interesting is that before this incident, all the drivers were racing on intermediate tires. At the time of the restart, the track had already dried out almost instantly. At the restart, all the drivers pulled into the pits for a fresh set of slick tires except one. 
Lewis Hamilton. This made Hamilton the only one starting the race on the starting line while the rest lined up in the pits. The only one. I mean, what a bizarre moment. But as bizarre as it was, check out this next surprising thing Ayrton Senna accomplished. What he pulled off in Brazil was simply unbelievable. Ahead of the race in 1991, Senna claimed pole position, outrunning the Williams duo of Ricardo Patrice and Nigel Mansell, teammate Gerard Berger and Ferrari's Jean Alessi and Alain Prost. Senna even had a perfect start to the race, sprinting away ahead of the rest of the drivers. However, after Senna pitted, Mansell cut his lead to just 7 seconds and was closing in on the Brazilian. To make matters worse, Mansell's conviction to win grew even stronger when Senna's gearbox began to fail as he lost the fourth gear. By lap 60, Mansell cut Senna's lead in half. But luckily for Senna, at the 61st lap, Mansell had his own gearbox issue as it slammed into neutral then second, which ultimately sent the British driver into a spin and out of the race. At the same time, Senna quickly lost all the gears as well except the six with Williams Patrice hot on his tail. Somehow, in an unbelievable way, Senna maintained the sixth gear until he crossed the finish line 2.9 seconds ahead of Patrice, which earned him his first home race win. This race was so difficult for Senna that the pain of trying to keep the car under control even caused him to develop muscle cramps. It was so severe that he literally had to be lifted from his car and even needed support to stand on the podium. Man, that race had to have been one of the best in Senna's career. But you know what else was brutal? The most devastating crashes that happened in F1. Like that one crash that caused which ended up destroying an F1 driver's career. Or another crash which was so unbearable that it even bankrupted the entire F1 team. These are all crazy and dangerous events in the sport. This kind of stuff does not happen every day, but when it does happen, they are hard to take your eyes off of. If you want to see more insane and crazy clips of professional racing, subscribe and like the video. Comment below if there's something you want us to make a video on.